Hey, it's Heather Chauvin, wife, mother of three boys, former social worker, dreamer, recovering rescuer, stage four cancer survivor. I started my motherhood journey when I was 18. I was single and living off government assistance. Beyond all of these titles and labels, I'm a human being, just like you, attempting to navigate it all while feeling good. My goal on this podcast is to show you that you can live an energized, sustainable life both at home and in your work. On this show, I attempt to keep it real with stories, interviews, and random thoughts. This is not a business or career podcast, and it's not a parenting podcast. It's both and so much more. You will laugh, you will cry, and maybe even get a little frustrated with the truth you've been hiding from yourself. I believe all human behavior is a language whether it's through your child's behavior, your health, or a relationship. And when we learn to listen instead of react, we begin to understand what it truly means to feel alive and in control. If you haven't already, go grab a copy of my book, Dying to Be a Good Mother. You can purchase it wherever books are sold online. And if you're interested in how to integrate this work into your life and get quicker results, you can learn more about my mastery and mastery business coaching experiences at heatherchauvin.com forward slash work with me. Heather Chauvin, C-H-A-U-V-I-N dot com forward slash work with me. And you have a personal question or a topic you'd like me to answer on this podcast, then text me 313-710-5199. 313-710-5199. All right, let's change your life. Let's dig in. All right. So we have Trish here and she is one of the brave women in my community um, who has raised her hand and said, I will, I will be put in the hot seat um, because I truly believe this is a conversation that we all are challenged with right now. I would say it's this new energy, new world, new season of jumping into summer. And I know everyone listening to this, not everyone is in a summer season because everyone's around the world. Um, But there's also this post-pandemic energy. And so there's a lot of frantic energy coming at us right now. Um, And I get a lot of questions about boundaries and rules and parents wanting to be flexible and have a routine, but also you know, it's like not super, super controlling. So where do we find that balance? Um, Especially when our children may not be having the same summer schedule as usual, but also allowing them to gain independence. So Trish, welcome. Hi. Um, Yeah. So a little background just on your, you know, what, you know, what you want to share around the child. So about your son, his age, Um, and we'll go from there and the challenge in your home. Okay. So, um, I work from home, but I work for a a corporate company. Um, my, my son is 13 years old and he will be going on, he'll be 14 at the end of June here in just a week. And the, the challenge that we're having is, and I am the, I am the parent. So I'm choosing not to say single mom. So I am the parent because that's a mindset thing that I'm getting out of. And so um, in being the primary parent and only parent, um, we are dealing with uh, being the enforcer and the nurturer. And as both, um, I'm I'm working on not, as I, I was saying to Heather, my core desired feelings are to be in control, but not to be controlled. And my go-to feeling is typically anger if I don't find control. So that's challenging. And so with boundaries, what I'm dealing with is because he is a teenager and he is growing, he wants to go to bed later 
and but he sleeps in because he doesn't have anywhere really to go and and I and I want to encourage that I want him to be that teenager and to have a little bit of that free schedule and I don't want to just be do 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 because I also remember being in the summertime and having that freedom to think and do whatever you kind of want to so that's good and bad for me because I'm an early person. So I usually get up at 4.45 or 5. I do my morning routine for about an hour and a half. That's sometimes working out. That's sometimes it includes journaling and meditation, drinking water. And so I don't want to stay up late. He wants to, he initially wanted to stay up until like 12.30. And I said, no. And then, but I also thought, I even researched teenagers sleep for eight to 10 hours. So if he sleeps till 10 or 1030 and he goes to bed at midnight, that's actually okay. So I can't be freaking out about that, but I wanted to freak out about it and say, you're going to bed when I'm going to bed. No. So I let him stay up till midnight, but then I feel out of control with that. And then he doesn't want to do the stuff he needs to do. Like he, he said he was going to read this summer. He said he was going to exercise this summer and I'm working from home. So I can't be like, you've got to go do this. You've got to go do this. And so I'm feeling very anxious um, about that. He does have summer camps. He's going to, he's at a summer camp actually this week. Mm -hmm. um, he'll be home for a week and a half. And then he's going to go to another one for a week and then he'll be back at his, and then he's going to his grandparents for about four days. So I'm trying to give him some structure without no structure. So that's a lot of background, but that's why it's been difficult for me to get into a routine mm -hmm. because every week seems different, but I also know that he needs some kind of structure. Awesome. So that's a lot of background. I don't know if it's worthwhile or not. Yeah. And I think it is worthwhile because everyone can probably see themselves in a part of your story. And you've been in my world for a while. And I know a big part of your story has been wanting to let go of that story of like, I'm a single parent. So I really love the reframe. And I'm sure a lot of people are going to gain a lot of value from that, the primary. Um, and you know this, but we live in a very individualized culture and then isolated culture. Um, and then throw the last year on top of that, right. Which has made it more isolating. So now we're just trying to reflex those muscles, um, and reevaluate like what was working, what wasn't working. And we do realize how codependent we are on other people, which is a beautiful thing, but also how much we resist creating this like community and village where we're like, okay, I'm just going to ask for help. I don't need to know the answer. Um, yeah. But we do put a lot of pressure on ourselves that we need to know. So when you say core desired feeling of, I want to feel in control, but I don't want to be controlling. What is another word that, you know, when you're communicating with Bear, um, when he is, Maybe he's mirroring back to you anger. Maybe he's mirroring yeah. back to you. You know, he's triggering that like, ah, oh, are you supposed to be sleeping this long? Like all of that. How do you want to be able to react when you're, when you're in a state of anger to be able to move through that emotion and then react differently? What's that feeling word you want to have with him? The feeling word. I mean, kind of what first comes to mind, Heather, is... Um, I don't know if it's a feeling word, but it's more of like be a guide to him mm -hmm. or to, um, you know, the other word was breathe because, um, but those aren't really the, that's not really the feeling word. The, so I'm going to use the word, I'm putting words in your mouth now, but I'm going to use, okay. and you, you can reflect back to me, but connection or compassion. So I think what I want, that's, that's interesting. It's, but for me, those are both. Mm -hmm. And I can, I'll give you a very specific example of where I was like, Oh, just wanted to be mad. And it was, he's getting ready for camp, right? I give him his list. You own this list. This is what you're supposed to put in your bag. And he's, 
He's got his iPad next to him. He's watching his iPad. He's listening to music. He's kind of putting stuff together. We've got to go like in an hour and a half mm-hmm. to go to camp. And I'm just, and I'm, I can feel, I can feel I'm going into the yellow zone. I'm going, I'm going there. I'm like, okay, buddy. I'm taking a breath. And I'm like, you got to get this list together. You got to get your stuff in there. Okay, mom, just go away. I got this. Okay. Okay. So I walk away because I don't want to be angry and I want to, and I want to let him own this. Um, so I come back in 30 minutes, nothing has changed. He's still laying there or with the iPad going, listening to music. And I'm like, so, okay, I'll just say what happened. I was like, okay, this, this is crazy. We are, we have to go. So I'm, you know, he's got stuff on the bed. Some of it's in. I'm like, okay, let's take the stuff out and then put it back in. And he's like, you just need to leave me. You don't need to leave me alone. I will get this. And I was so mad. I was just like, he's going to leave everything and then he's not going to have this stuff. And actually, Heather, I stopped right there and I went, okay, then you're going to leave everything. You're on your own. You're 13 years old. You're. This is going to be a great lesson for you. And I just was like, let that go. When I was 13, my mom and dad were gone all the time. I was latchkey kid. So I think it's just that I, I want that feeling of it's going to be okay. Like, it's okay for him to make mistakes. It's so I want to feel that you're not, a, I, I guess I'm going to feel like you're not a bad mom. It's, it's okay. You, you're, it, he's not life and death. So I just want that. So I, I want instead to say to him, like, I want to stay connected and calm. Like, babe, I'm going to let you do this. And this is why I rethought about this as I was driving home. Babe, I want you to do this, but you're if you leave something, you're going to just be without it. But I want you to do this on your own. And I think instead of me going to anger and just letting him own it, he wouldn't, because what I'm instilling in him by saying, you're not doing it right. I'm making, basically saying, you're not doing this right, which is not fair to him. Yeah. Because he's not going to have confidence. And he did leave something behind, correct? And he did leave something behind. Um, yes, his sleeping bag. Yeah. Um, and he did, he, he um, so he did have a, I felt better as a mom. He did take the two sheets and a pillow. Okay. Um, and he did have a long sleeve shirt and, a, and long pants in case he got cold. Did he but call he, you? Did you go bring the sleeping bag? Nothing because you can't, they have no phone. They have nothing. So I'm, I kind of was like, okay, I panicked. And then I was like, okay. Yes. I I just let it go. Like, yes. You had to process that. I had to process it. I had to go through the guilt of being a bad mom. Why didn't I think about that? Why didn't I make that happen? Oh my gosh. You know, the flip side of that is he's going to come home. And he's going to be like, that's your fault. You didn't pack it for me. And I'm going to have to deal with, no, I gave you the list. You could have made a second swoop around the house and made sure you got it. So I'm, that's kind of where I, that's, so I'm kind of to put emotional boundaries for myself, but also for him. Okay. I love this stuff. So, um, as you know, I'm raising a teenager, he's 16 years old and going through very similar things. Um, it's interesting because people think, you know, they, everyone has their opinion of like the infant stage and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, if I could go back in time, the infant stage, I'm like, why do they even write books about what like child development at that phase? It should just be self-care. It should be everything about like, master your sleep, figure this out. Like number one, like these baby shower gifts. No, hire them a sleep coach, like (laughs) sleep, 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 sleep. like figure out the sleep, sleep, like that's it. And feed yourself and create space. And that's, that's it. The emotional, um, we always need to have that emotional resiliency, the emotional intelligence. That's truly what I believe children teach us, right? Because they're always mirroring to us. But then you get to this phase where, 
the child is trying to gain independence, but at the, it's like a puppy, right? They're still, yeah. their brain is not fully developed, but their, their body, physical body, they're becoming stronger than us. Yeah. And yeah. we can't put them in a timeout. We can't do that. So mm-hmm. it's it literally, it's all about the relationship and connection. And as you, like, I know you've been doing this work for a while, but as you've been um, exploring, you know that these triggers are yours. You can feel that you're going into the red zone. Unfortunately, the crappy part is, yes, you're like, okay, what is this saying about me, right? Can I hold my guilt? Can I hold my fear knowing that probably all week I may be thinking about him not having a sleeping bag and I have to I not be okay with it. I just have to hold that and process that discomfort for me because what typically happens is, you know, the parent primarily, typically the nurturer, the mother will go and and be like, he needed this. So I dropped it off, which creates codependency, which creates enabling, which creates boys that turn into men that have wild codependency on a female nurturer and then can't wipe his own ass. So I believe as women, it's really, really, especially when we're raising boys, it's really important for us to understand that this isn't just one generation. Like we're literally like undoing patriarchy. We're undoing like generations and generations of the mom, quote unquote, doing it all. And he will feel that discomfort. And then, you know, as you're talking, one of the biggest shifts for me too was understanding that one, you're you're a grown ass adult, right? So your coping strategies in life are way different than a 13 or 14 year old boy. But your brain as a female brain can multitask and it is wired in so many different ways than a male brain, right? They're very linear, Um And so I'm experiencing the same thing in my home right now. And some of it is really annoying because we have, and we can talk about the list and screen time. Um, uh, Logan and I were going to the gym together. And I said, you know, we're the only freedom we can create right now is this gym membership, right? And I was going at like 8 a.m. And I was like, if you want to come with me, you have to get up at that time. If you want to go later, you're going to ride your bike there because it's not that far for him. And he wasn't coming. And I just said, your actions are showing me this isn't a priority for you. So I said, you have two weeks left because I canceled your membership. And he was pissed. And I was like, I, I'm not. I'm, you know, if you want something, you need to show it. And he was like, are you serious? Did you seriously cancel the membership? I said, especially if I'm paying for it to better your mental health. But when I said it, I didn't say it from an angry place. I was like, I get it, buddy. I've, I've like spent money on things that I haven't used and I just needed to take ownership. And I said, and to be honest, sometimes I don't want to go at 8am either. And I don't, but it's, you know, you got to show up too. I'm not dragging you across the finish line. So today we went because he has a few more weeks and he was like, thank you for getting me up. And, and I did not want to get up today and go. And there's those moments where you're just like, we're guiding each other. Like we're figuring this out together. It's not, you know, me versus you. And But having compassion in those moments when you're watching your child really struggle and you're like, he's just, you know, he's like, I got an hour, right? There's a, I think there's a, I forget the term. There's a a concept that, you know, if you have an hour to get something done, it'll take you an hour to get it done. If you have 10 minutes, it'll take you 10 minutes. I forget what it is. And that's, you know, they're like, I got lots of time. I hear it all the time. I got lots of time. I got lots of time. And I was like, get your water, maybe grab something to eat before you go. No, you're going to puke after working out because you didn't fuel your body properly. And I have to trust, I have to trust in life. I have to trust the universe. I have to trust in the human body. Um, And I have to trust so much more that the resiliency, right? Like the resiliency of these children. So what we do is we back off And we hold this bubble and we hold this, you know, they're going to fall and smack their face a million times. And you just got to be there 
to pick them back up. And that second, like you said, when he walks back in and says, you didn't bring my, you know, sleeping bag and knowing that he's showing up as the persecutor, he's showing up as the victim and you get to say simply non-reactive. How is that my responsibility? Explain that to me. How is that my responsibility? And it's like, this is the constant of, we are their guide. We are their teacher. So he's constantly showing you, he's like, it's like pouring, I don't know, alcohol on a wound, right? He's like, let me just show you where all your triggers are, all the wounds, all the, yes. I'm not enoughness every day, every day, every day. So Based on what I said there, and I know you know some of this, but based on what I said there, what came up for you of where you can redirect your energy and attention? Well, I think what you said there, which is what I'm learning, and I'm like, gosh, this is taking me forever to learn, but is that is that it's it's that what you said before is I want the connection with the compassion. I want the two together. And the only way I'm going to get connection is to show him the compassion in those moments. And so when you said, don't say it from an angry place. And that's been a real um, a process for me because um, I'm learning that instead of being bitey about my corrections or my, you know, guiding um, that if I say it from a a good place, like a calm voice, uh, more of a nurturing voice, not a baby voice, but just a nurturing voice, like, Hey, bud, you know, we're going to leave in 30 minutes. You need to have that bag packed. And if there are things that aren't there, then that's going to be your responsibility. Um, because I want you to be that grown up 13, 14 year old. And that's all I'm going to say about it versus, Oh my God, you know, like, like the spaz of like, we got to go. And now you don't have anything ready. And, and it makes me feel, then it makes me feel worse because I'm angry and you know, all that. So I think it's recognizing that I'm in that zone Mm -hmm. and then taking a breath and realizing I want that connection, compassion. And I really don't want it coming from an angry place. I want it to become like, I really like the word guide. I want to be your guide in life. I want to guide you to um, learning to deal with your emotions. I'm going to guide you to um, to living and learning, make mistakes, but grow from them. Not be like, oh, I can't do it because my mom is the one that has to do this for me. Yeah. And also um, realize he's guiding you too. Oh, yeah. To the exact same thing, to teaching you how to deal with your emotions. And so that gives him control as well when you allow him to be your guide. So an example of that would be, you know, I asked my kids, they really enjoy doing this, but I'm like, call me out, call me out when, you know, in a compassionate way, the same way I would call them out Mm -hmm. uh, when you see me off. And my kids will say, especially the older one, um, but mid one 11 year old, um, will say like, are you in your red zone today? And instead of me being like, you know, cause I'll be like scrolling on my phone as I tell them to get off screen time. Right. <laughs> and, and, and they'll be like, they'll call me out on it all the time. And then I use work as the excuse or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I have to take ownership for my behavior and go, yeah, you're right. And then pay attention to the impulse and the addiction that I have with my screen. And yet I want them to do something. So, so then it loosens the rain a little bit and that's where I can soften because I'm like, if my brain is so addicted to like, this device. And I'm like, I'm an adult. I get to zone out. I'm in my bed. I get to zone out. And they're like, well, when I'm in my bed and I want to zone out, you don't let me do that. And I'm like, yeah. So if I was in your shoes, how would I feel? And it would probably feel like somebody's taking away my freedom yeah, and taking away like the one thing where I can just zone out for a moment. So then I go, 
okay, how can I approach this in a more compassionate way? So I'll simply say, instead of get off, right? Like get off, you've had so much today, which I do, you know, sometimes I'm like, God, do I have to like lock these things somewhere and like with a key and, you know, sometimes we create more boundaries around that, but when, for whatever reason I'm working and I'm not paying attention and I go upstairs and I was like, what the fuck? Everyone's on a device. Like how did this happen? Right. So instead of if I'm in my red, because I'm already in my red zone for something and I, and then I'm a tornado, they get to call me out and I get to go, you know what? Yes. Is, can everyone get off in 20 minutes? And then just creating a little leeway, but then I have to tell myself, Heather, how did you get here? How did you get here in your red zone? Well, you had a crappy sleep last night. You skipped your workout. You drank that extra cup of coffee. Um, So Heather, what do you need to do? And I do talk to myself this way. What do you need to do to get back in alignment, right? Um, So your energetic time management, what do you need to do? And then the second thing I do is what boundaries have I let slip? What systems do we not have in place? And do I need to communicate that with somebody? So in your case, you're the only adult in your home. Um, In my case, I have another adult in my home, but sometimes that feels harder for me because that other adult also has their own plan. And it's very easy for me to like want to blame the other adult for the plan slipping. So then I have to say, if I want to see results in something, I have to make it happen. And my go-to, which I don't like to do, is let's have a family meeting. Let's have a family meeting and let's sit down and let's all get on the same page. The resistance I typically receive from that is, well, mom, you're the one who always slips on the plan. (laughs) And I go, yeah, because I will be working or doing something and my brain is somewhere else and I'm not paying attention. But when I, it's the same thing as a habit, like a morning routine, nighttime routine, these things are going to slip. That's okay. Like imperfection is expected. Like I am so imperfect, but when I see it slipping and I can catch it quicker rather than let it go for months and months. And then I don't yell. I don't complain. I'm like, why is this happening? So then I'm like, everyone back at the table. And my husband will usually say to me, Heather, this is a great plan. This is where you're gonna, this is where you're gonna screw it up. And I have to be open to receive that feedback from my family. Like, yeah, you do great for three days. And then on the fourth day, you'll be working. And one of the boys will come in behind you and say, can I have screen time? And I'm like, whatever, because I'm not focused on that. He's like, that's, so then you get to see your weaknesses. You get to see your vulnerable moments. And then I pay attention to that vulnerable moment. And I'm, and then as I'm working, I'm like, Oh, here they come, here they come. And I was like, no. And then, you know, so it's like, it's rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, expect, you know, imperfection. And then he's going to do the same thing. So have your plan in place. And then you just keep revisiting it. And the plan is so effing simple. Right. The, the not the part that's not simple is the emotion crap around it. So let's talk about plan. So you and I have previously talked about this. This is my go-to. And so I'll explain it and then you can talk about it. Okay. I always say, have a list, right? Come to the table with a list of like, And I know you printed something off and people can, you can go on Pinterest, you can go on Instagram, but a popular one is, you know, do this, 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 and then you get electronic time. Right. In our house, we have something similar and then Wi-Fi is turned on or I'll change it and say, you know, you got to do all these things before lunch, after lunch, then you can have a little bit of time, whatever it is, it's going to be different in every household. I typically make my children sign it, like especially the teenager made them sign it. And I take a picture Mm -hmm. for evidence because Mm -hmm. they're easily manipulate, like manipulative. 
and I have it on the board, but I also know that on the board, when someone gets angry, it will be taken down. It will be ripped up. So I have evidence. I have a, <laughs> it's like, I got this photo. I've sent it to five people. You can't get this away from me. It's signed. It's a document. It's signed. I'm like, do we need to go to a lawyer? I will make it happen. Um, my point is stand firm. You can always reassess it. But then you're like, we're going to have weekly check-ins. How you doing? Is it working for you? Do we want to, do we want to check something out? How's this plan working? One of the things I said to you as well is you, you have your suggested plan, right? You're like, right. this is my suggestion. So this is the being in control, but not being controlling. What would you like to be on this list? What is your suggestion so that he feels he has some control, but mm -hmm. you have an expectation that you don't get to sleep until noon, diddle daddle all day. And then, you know, a month into summer, you're depressed because right. you don't know how to manage your big emotions. So I'm going to hold an expectation that you do need to show up for yourself, your mind, your body, your soul right. um, before you have device time. Um, so yeah, what do you take away from that? So, um, I really like the piece that you said, how, how did I get here? Like, how did I get here? How did I get to this red zone? That meant a lot to me because I think that's the part of, of you have to back up and go, what, what are the things that I, that led up to this? And it's usually midday for me that, that where I like lose it. I lose all my crap there in the morning. I'm good. And so, um, so it was probably a, a customer call that maybe didn't go well, or maybe it was an employee of mine, or maybe it was something that I've been asked to do that is, you know, crazy town or something. Um, and so, and then it's, a, uh, and then you, like you, then you wake up, not wake up, but you know, then you come out of your, your like work trance and you see that, they haven't done any of their chores. They haven't read at all. And so then it's like, okay. And they're on electronics. So you're like, okay, wait a minute. What, what has just happened here? So I think it's, and then I usually get upset. So then that's when the anger comes. So I think I have to be aware of where I am. And I think it's a self-fulfilling prophecy a little bit, right? Like, you just had a crappy situation happen. Now, now I'm going to go hit the adrenaline. I'm going to go control something. And he's going to be the person I control. Yeah. So that's, that's, I have to just stop that. That's a, that's a stop, a hard stop. So I think I have to recognize I'm in that I'm feeling out of control and I had maybe a bad situation and that's a go for a walk for 10 minutes or something. So and I really think that that's, awareness. Yes. And in that moment, when you know you're in the red and he's on electronics and he's not supposed to, you yeah. just let it go. And you're like, you get electronics. I have to get back to my green. Yes. And then when you're in your green, you go, okay, but how did he get his electronics without doing that? Right. So now I have to put, I have to put them somewhere where he can't, he has to come to me for access to the electronics. And so right we've gotten to a point where we physically have a safe in our house and every, because, you know, and sometimes I'm telling you, sometimes my devices are in that safe. It's not just the children, but mm -hmm. we, you know, it was like, everyone puts their phone in the kitchen. And then all of a sudden I'm like, how is it in my bed? Right. right? So, and the same for them. It's like, okay, I go to sleep and then they wake up and, or the oldest wakes up and he grabs it. So, yeah, it all goes into the device, you know, at night and, or it goes into, you know, the safe at night or it goes into frick, it, depending on the weather. I know some places would be crazy. You wouldn't want to do that, but you're like, I got to put it in the trunk of the car. Like I have to put it in a very uncomfortable spot where I have to like turn key, you know, make it very difficult to get to. Right. Um, and then, you know, your brain, we're just breaking these patterns so that he, you know, you get off the, you have your break, you do whatever. And he has not done the things on the list and it's 12 o'clock, two o'clock, whatever time right. it is. And 
you're like, yeah. He's like, well, I need my electronics, my electronic time. You're like, no, it's not buddy. You didn't do these things. And then you just sit and hold that discomfort for like probably a week until he realizes natural consequence. So he's like, oh, she's serious. Like if I don't do this, then I won't get this. But he knows she's busy. I can go sneak yeah, it. And, and right. then she's going to blow up, at, which is fine. I can handle that. That's exactly. And then the cycle continues. So exactly. it's really about you going, one, emotional regulation on your behalf. Two, more restriction on getting the device and then having the list and then rinsing and repeating that cycle. Yeah. And I think you also said something that was really important too, is that have that weekly check-in, have that like, okay, so what is working and what isn't working, which then gets to that connection compassion, right? I realize that that's hard for you, or that's been very difficult for you to accomplish. So what would you do differently? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that resonates and I'm, I'm just, I think it's this whole electronic piece because it's, I feel like I'm, we're on them as much as they're on them and we do a brain, you know, we just kind of shut out. It's kind of a relaxing also. Um, but yeah, bear, but bear will call me out. Like he will be like on stuff. So I think he will He'll be like that you're doing that or, um, well, mom, you're not being patient, mom, you're not being patient again. And I hate that, but I'm like, yeah, you're right. Um, good point. Um, I'm working on it. I'm getting better. Um, and so, yeah, it's the electronic piece is tough because then it's like, do you, do you completely take them away? Or if they say, okay, I'm going to get my stuff done. You just say when the stuff is done, then you get it. Yeah. You know, like I have to think about, you don't get, I'm, you know, all government stuff aside, you don't get a paycheck if you don't work. Right. I don't get a paycheck if I don't work. Right. So why do they get their paycheck when they don't work? Yeah. Typically that comes from a place of guilt because then we feel mean. Right. We are, our guilt means I'm doing something bad or shame, which is like, I am bad. Like I am not a good mother. I am bad. And when right. shame takes over, then we give them their paycheck when they have not done any work, which creates enabling behavior. Yeah. So in the, it's temporary discomfort, a temporary emotional discomfort, which in that moment, you're healing so much inside of yourself and you're really showing your child how to take that initiative and responsibility because they're going to be able to translate that skill as an adult. You're saying some really important stuff because how do, how do I feel successful is I make progress, right? I make progress in recognizing my emotions. I'm making progress and having a morning routine consistently. And he, he actually verbalized it. We ended up having like a pop-up camp baseball camp that we didn't know about, but he got to go to. And instead of going to his iPad first thing in the morning and then doing some chores throughout the day or whatever, um, he went to this camp and he had to be there at nine o'clock in the morning and he was there till noon. And the second day he finished and he said, you know, mom, I really like being around these people. Um, mom, I really feel like, it, you know, I'm learning something and doing something. And it, it, that alone validated that, and he's an only child at this point, his older brothers are gone. So his only interaction has been electronics, except for like going to these camps. And so that validated a, we're social people, right? He needs that social contact, but he also needed to feel progress. Like he was making progress and doing something. And so I think that that's what you're validating for me is that even though there may be that uncomfortable time, that progress is what we're trying to teach them. Like if they keep making progress, they're going to grow into these satisfied human beings versus just, you know, not doing anything. Yeah. 
Yeah. And we don't need to be everything for our children. That's right. a big one too, especially when we've been so connected for the last year. Yeah. Um, and we do live in a culture where we are everything to our children. We're the entertainer, we're the Uber driver. We're like, you know, we literally perform our lives around their desires, dreams, and goals. And then, right. you know, we all end up dead inside and we're like, who am I anymore? Right. That's very different. We swung the pe pendulum where, you know, I mean, back in the day, it was very different. You have children for labor <laughs> for like the yeah, farm or whatever. Right. Um, and so now it's like, you know, how can I feel fulfilled, content, happy, and grow as a human being? But how can I teach my child to do the same where we're both learning and growing and every family and situation is going to be unique? So um, we could talk about this forever and ever and ever. What right. have been your biggest takeaways that you're going to implement? So I think it's, you know, what are my go-to feelings? I, it, you said, so how do you want to feel? And so I wrote that down, um, you know, that connection, compassion, think about those kind of together. I want the connection. So I need to give the compassion to do that. Um, own, you know, kind of own that fear and guilt at that time when I'm feeling it and just know that that's, those aren't the feelings I want. Those are the feelings that I feel that I want to kind of redirect those. Um, don't say things from an angry place um, because that, that doesn't instill the connection at all. Um, I think the other piece was, is, you know, I'm not only his guide, but he, he's my guide. Um, and then the big question at the very the end that we were just talking about is how did I get to that place? How did I get to that red zone? And what are the things I can do to uh, be aware of it so that I don't do that again? Awesome. Um, so those, I think, are the things, big things. Awesome. Yeah. And have your strategy, have your plan, right? I think I'm in the middle where it's like, I love strategy, but yeah. I'm not a strategist. It's like, we need strategies 10%. The 90% is doing the emotional work around it. So have that plan in place of like, these are the guidelines yeah. because I think structure is really important, but I'm also somebody who doesn't like too much structure. So you have the structure and keep revisiting it. So you're like, we're going to have a standing meeting every Monday night or every Sunday yeah. night. And we're just going to check in. And sometimes those meetings will feel completely useless. And sometimes they'll be amazing. But when we just have that constant tap in, tap in, you know, after a few meetings, then we start to gain this momentum and we're on the same page. Um, right. but then what happens is we implement a plan. We don't follow up with the plan right. and then we're, it's a cycle. So just keep tapping and you're going to make magic happen. I'm going, I'm getting there. I'm getting... Well, that's it. And I wanted to thank you for listening today because I truly believe you are exactly where you need to be. And now I have a favor to ask. In exchange for the value you've gained from this free podcast, I'd be forever grateful if you would leave us a review on iTunes. Share the show with at least one woman in your life who you feel would benefit and or take a screenshot and share it on social media. And always feel free to tag me at Heather Chauvet. The world does not benefit from your guilt and fatigue. The world needs more women who are willing to unlearn everything they've been taught. Women who are courageous enough to feel good and not let guilt run the show. I believe you are that courageous woman. To see if my community and coaching is the right fit for you and your big vision, the relationships you desire, the money, time, energy that you know deep down you are capable of creating, then head on over to Heather. Chauvin.com forward slash work with me. That's Heather Chauvin, C H A U V I N dot com forward slash work with me and take the next step in the right direction. Taking a stand for how you feel means you are taking a stand for how your, your children show up as adults. And if you have a personal question or topic you'd like me to answer on the podcast, text me. 
313-710-5199. You are so worthy of feeling good. Now go do some scary shit. Thank you.